We're sitting outside the impenetrable fortress that is NFL headquarters here on Park Avenue in New York City. Somewhere up there, Roger Goodell is in an office, away from inquisitive questions from reporters or angry protesters screaming at him. The trouble for Roger Goodell began last February when video surfaced showing Baltimore Ravens star Ray Rice pulling his then fiance and now wife, Janae Rice, unconscious from a casino elevator in Atlantic City. After a disciplinary hearing in June, Goodell decided to suspend Rice for only two games, actually half what the league mandates for off-season marijuana use. Then, in September, a more graphic video surfaced, showing the running back punching Janae and knocking her out. This time, Goodell suspended Rice indefinitely, claiming, dubiously, he hadn't before seen the full video. I got it wrong in the handling of the Ray Rice matter, and I'm sorry for that. I got it wrong on a number of levels, from the process that I led to the decision that I reached. As this controversy was escalating, the Viking star Adrian Peterson was charged with beating his son with a switch from a tree. It was another example that gave the impression of a league out of control. Despite all this, the games went on and more people watched than ever. Ratings for NFL games are up 3% this season across the board. The NFL had 36 of the top 40 telecasts since September 7th. The Philadelphia Eagles-Dallas Cowboys game on Thanksgiving was the most watched show of the fall television season, drawing 32 million viewers, the highest viewership for an NFL game on Thanksgiving since 1998. Whether it was concussion crisis, incidents of domestic violence, child abuse, or a mid-season federal locker room drug raid, nothing could derail the NFL's hold on America. If you remember back in training camp and in preseason, Ray Rice came into a standing ovation from Ravens fans. It's been kind of incredible to see how quick some people are to, uh, to forgive and forget. But Roger Goodell was never really in trouble. The commissioner may be responsible to the fans and the players, but he is really truly only beholden to the very wealthy 32 team owners that he has made obscenely rich. NFL revenue has increased over 31% from 2008 to 2013. The bigger issue as it pertains to Goodell is that there are no checks and balances. He is has concentrated all of his power at the top, and even if he were to somehow be forced to resign, whatever figurehead took over as commissioner representing these 32 owners over interests of the players or the fans would still retain all of those powers and would still have to answer to nobody but himself. Goodell remained essentially silent other than an awkward press conference held late on a Friday afternoon in September until December 9th when an interview was published in which he admitted, quote, I blew it in regards to the scandals that plagued him this season. The next day he unveiled a tougher personal conduct policy at a meeting with league owners. That came as a Bloomberg politics poll showed that half of Americans don't want their sons playing football. All of this would seem to indicate that again, the winds of change may be blowing. The reason this strategy works, the reason Roger Goodell can ignore all the think pieces and the protests and the screams and the op-eds is that we will not stop watching. And the fact is, I'm angry with the NFL, but I'm as guilty as anyone else. Because like the rest of you, it's Monday night. I'm at a bar, I've got Aaron Rodgers on my fantasy team, and I am ready for some football.